In this video with the On King, I'm going to talk about how to honor your OBGYN rotation, including how to use Anki for the shelf exam. Hey everyone, I'm going to kind of go over the outline of this video right here, just so you know kind of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, if you check the description, I'll put the time codes if you want to skip forward to something. So first I'm going to talk about week to week, kind of what my schedule was like. Then I'll talk about the things I would have done the same throughout the rotation and then the things I would have done differently. This is kind of a similar pattern to what I did in my video on the surgery rotation, although I've learned a little bit, this being my second rotation. And then some rotation tips and some biohacks because it is a very surgical rotation, you're gonna have long hours, you'll be on your feet. I wanna mention our Anki Mastery course here. This is a mastery course to teach you everything you need to know about Anki and it includes eight lessons that go through all of the really important things and it also has an add-on the palace butler add-on that will automatically set up everything for you install add-ons settings everything uh, here's just a preview of all of those things and if you check the description i'll put the link you can actually uh, try it for free if you want to check it out and see what it's like all right so back to OBGYN. here's the four week plan before the rotation, I did a huge chunk of the Anki cards. I was on an elective rotation, and so before the rotation actually started, those two weeks, I was doing like 30 new cards a day from the Step 2 deck, and I didn't do a lot of the cards. I suspended a ton, or I just flagged them as like, I don't think I really need this because I felt like a lot of them I had done during Step 1. Now, during Weeks 1 and 2, I did the UIs questions, talk about that in just a second and then during weeks three and four I did the AMBOSS questions and then I did all four of the MBMEs that were available I felt like all of these were really helpful now here's the kind of UIs stuff this is the APCO and here's this playlist right here for medical students they have videos on literally every topic and then for those videos there's a question set that's what the UIs question set is if you go to apco.org Everything is there. Just go into resources, medical student, and you'll be able to find everything. Our institution provided that for us, but it looks like you can actually buy the UIs questions if you want. And I felt like they were really good questions. They had really good explanations, so definitely worth doing. There's about 500 of them. There's a lot. Okay, so my work hours. What was life like on an OBGYN rotation? Week one, I was on OB, and I did four night shifts from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. Really long shifts. Um, I stayed pretty busy one or two of the nights, and I was watching births all night. Uh, I usually saw a C-section or two near the beginning of the evening every night, uh, but there was one or two nights where I didn't really do much at all, and I chose to not sleep. I just flipped to a nighttime schedule, and so I actually got a lot of studying done while I was sitting around. And unfortunately, as a male, uh, there's a lot of the times when they don't let you in the room. So I did have a lot of study time uh, on the second week as well on OB, but then I was doing days, and I had five days where I was working essentially 12-hour days. Um, same thing. I was kind of, you're waiting around, waiting for a, a baby to be born, right, or for someone to need a C-section or something. So that's kind of what I did. I did do a lot of study time. Uh, weeks three through four were my gyne rotation. That was Monday through Friday. Similar surgical rotation, and we were usually done by like 5 p.m., but there were days I went home at like 2 or 3. This was right during the COVID crisis, and they had canceled a lot of uh, elective surgeries, and so there was even one day where they told me to just go home because there was nothing for me to do. So I did study quite a bit. I studied on this rotation way more than I studied on my surgery rotation and my MBME or my shelf exam score was quite a bit higher because of that. But just know that you, this rotation, you'll probably be able to have some study time during the day. Now things I would do the same. I would do all the MBMEs, the UIs, and the MBOSS questions. Like I said, you have more study time, just do it. They're all great. I've actually heard UWorld is pretty good for this rotation as well. Um, I know some rotations is not as good as others, but feedback from my peers is that it's it's pretty good. Um, keep. I made Anki cards for every missed question. I felt like that was super helpful, like really, really key to doing well on the shelf exam. And I didn't do that necessarily with the surgery rotation. So I felt like that was a good step in the right direction. Now, no patients before every surgery. This is super important. All my evaluations mentioned that I understood my patients and I knew the surgery going into it and what to expect and they were impressed by that. So that's something you should do whether you're on surgery or OBGYN or any surgical rotation really. If you go into an OR, you should know why you're there and what the patient, why the patient is there. Um, show up excited. I think a lot of people know you're not going to go into OBGYN, right? They know it's a very like niche thing and there's certain types of people that go into it, but I was super excited. It helps that my wife is 
pregnant, <laughs> and I'm, but uh, I was really excited and like asked all these questions and stuff. And I think it made them a lot more willing to teach me. And so just show up excited, whether you really enjoy it or not. And I think you'll have a better time. The other things I did was with Anki, I used the easy button a lot more often. If I felt like it was easy, I hit easy. And then I suspended. If I was like, I know this really well from like, you'll learn fetal heart tones at the very beginning, but then you learn them like down pat because you see it all day every single day as you're sitting there waiting for babies to be born so i would just suspend those cards you really don't need them anymore another thing i did and i can't really comment on whether i do this the same or differently is i changed my interval modifier on anki to 140 percent and i'm not 100 percent sure how well this worked it did decrease my card load a little bit uh, we'll see kind of down the road whether or not that was a good decision or not but I mean, as, if you're following along with these videos as I'm going through my shelf exams, I'll keep commenting on that. The things I would do differently. With Anki, I would spend more time making quality cards. I usually just made them really fast based off of the questions that I missed. And then like two weeks down the road, I'd be like, wait, what was I getting at with that card? Because I didn't take the time to make a quality card. The other thing is I'd make cards on related topics and areas that I was weak. So like sometimes I'd get a question right and then I just wouldn't make it make a card on it or I'd get a question wrong and I'd make a card art for that one question that I got wrong not realizing that I really like if it say it was postpartum bleeding but I was really weak in that area really I should be making cards on all the postpartum bleeding so that I realized that was a weak area I missed a question on it I'm gonna go back review all those topics and make flashcards on it so that I never miss something on that topic ever again and I didn't quite approach it like that I should have um, like I said, know the surgery, but also know related surgeries and treatment options. This was a mistake I made early on in the rotation. I knew a lower transverse C-section, but I didn't study all the other different types of C-sections. And when I was in one, the surgeon was like, so tell me about all the other types of C-sections. I was like, oh shoot, I don't know this at all. So like realize that. Or if you're doing an ovarian mass or something like that, you should study all of them. Germ cell tumors, sex cord tumors, and just like know all of that and a little bit about pieces because chances are they're going to ask you about related things as well the other thing is do questions more seriously i felt like i kind of did them i mean you're tired it's harder compared to the step one time period i would have just tried to focus a little more sometimes i would on amboss there's an undo button you know i'd click it and then i'd be like oh i didn't read the question so i hit undo and go back and actually read it and stuff don't do that i i shouldn't have done that and i i realized as i was going through that it was costing me okay so some rotation tips i mentioned this one with surgery learn to suture they're going to give you suture opportunities in this. It's a very surgical rotation, so learn to do that. I'll put a link in the description of this video. to You can buy this suture kit on Amazon. It's really cheap. The other thing is ask the scrub techs for suture. If there's leftover after a surgery, then you can practice with it. Um, and, and Definitely learn, and you'll get more opportunities. Look up the procedures the night before. So look up oh you know different types of c-sections or whatever the night before but look up the anatomy and the patient right before like i literally would pull up my phone and look up like uh, uterus anatomy right before i was going into a hysterectomy just so that i could review it real quick where all the vessels were and all of that stuff because then it's fresh in your mind when you're actually about to see it same thing with the patient uh, the other thing, this is really key, I feel like it's helped me a lot, is ask what do you expect of me to honor? You can do that right at the beginning of the rotation or kind of in the middle of the rotation, but ask the residents, ask the physicians, whatever, and you'll find out A, who's going to be evaluating you, and B, what do they expect of you to honor their rotation? Then they know you want to honor and you're willing to work for it. They give you a list of things to do, and as long as you go do that, they're more or less obligated to give you a decent evaluation. Other rotation tips. The Amboss Anki add-on is amazing. It's super nice. There are so many abbreviations in OBGYN. It's ridiculous. And having the Amboss add-on so that I could just like hover over it on the Anki cards and figure out what that abbreviation actually meant was really nice. I felt like it was really helpful. Uh, like I was talking about fetal heart monitoring. Learn that from day one because on OB, you're literally going to be watching monitors all day as you're waiting for the babies. If you come in already knowing that, that you're going to be a, a good step ahead. Okay, whenever you're taking a history from a pregnant woman, you're going to always, always want to ask about any bleeding, any cramping, if changes in the fetal movement, whether they've felt the baby, have they, you know, have they not felt it for a while, all those things. Those are things you're going to want to ask in every history. Another thing, when you're taking history from a fertile woman who's not pregnant, you're always going to want to ask about menstrual history, about what types of contraceptives they're on or have been in the past. 
Uh, their pap history, you're going to want to know whether or not they need a pap smear today. And then sexual history is usually really important to know, you know, what needs to be tested that day and stuff like that. And I did put this on the slide, but if it's someone who's a postmenopausal woman, you're always going to want to ask about bleeding because bleeding in a postmenopausal woman is cancer until proven otherwise. So that's just one thing. But these are things that I felt like if you just remember, always ask these in every history. It'll help you a lot. And lastly, talk before you touch. So I did get the chance to do a couple of physical exams, which is a really nice opportunity. I'm thankful for the patients to let me do that. But always, always, always talk before you touch because every single topic you're going to talk about on this rotation and every physical exam you're going to do on this rotation are all very sensitive things. It's a very sensitive part of the body. And so if you just talk like, I'm going to touch you now. Okay, this is my finger. I'm going to place it here. And using, uh, you know, being conscious of what words you're using, it's going to get you a long way and it'll help the patient feel much more comfortable. It'll also help the residents and physicians realize that you're taking this seriously. Uh, the other thing you want to get, just lastly, is like every patient, you're going to want to know their um, gravidity and parity, how many times they've been pregnant, how many kids they've had, and their pregnancy history. Obviously, that's going to be very important. Okay, so biohacks. Like I said, this is a very surgical rotation. You're going to be on your feet. You're going to have long hours. Number one, compression socks. I put this off on my surgery rotation for like four weeks, and that was a huge mistake. Um, all of these, I'll have links in the description so that you can, uh, I've got an Amazon link. I get a tiny kickback from it if you buy with that, but honestly, there's tons of cheap ones on Amazon, so find something that works for you. Uh, liquid IV, I felt like it was really good. A friend told me about this. Uh, it looks like this. I buy it at Costco. You can buy it on Amazon. Uh, it's just supposedly helps you stay more hydrated. I'm not 100% sure if it works or not, but I felt like it was pretty good. I would have one big bottle of water every day. I rarely had to pee and I wasn't ever feeling dehydrated. Uh, a foldable clipboard, I felt like it was really helpful. Looks like this, uh, just to write things down. It's just really nice. You're always gonna be writing a lot down. Um, so having something like this was handy to put in your white coat or whatever it may be. A wake up light. I feel like this is super helpful and a lot of people don't actually know about this, um, but it, it starts turning on like when you're about or like half an hour before you want to wake up and you're gonna be waking up at absurd hours of the day you're up, you might be on night shifts like I was and your clocks all over the place I feel like these are really nice uh, my wife and I both love this uh, to go lunches I think it's just nice to have so that you can just grab and go whenever you need to and the only other things I would mention is if you are doing night shifts getting a really nice like eye mask so that you can sleep during the day is really nice. I took Benadryl to just knock me out the first couple nights, things like that. Some people like the white noise machines. Otherwise, good luck on your OBGYN rotation. I'd love to hear how it goes. Um, it was really fun, and I ended up enjoying it way more than I thought I was going to. Thanks for learning with The On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here, as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at OnKingMed. Also, feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, onkingmed.com, for more tips and tricks.